Welcome. Today we're going to talk about affiliated dressage and when do we get started and how do we get started. As you all know, I am a um, registered judge and um, on the trainers database as well. Today we're going to talk about affiliated dressage and how do we affiliate and should we affiliate and is it out of our reach? So what I would like to say is that it's, it's there for all of us to have a go. And it doesn't matter what size your horse is, what breed it is, what color it is, as long as its paces are correct. And when I mean, uh, when I talk about correct paces, I'm talking about um, regular paces. So quality of the paces can be improved with training, but the regularity of the paces, it needs to have a very clear four beat walk two beat trot and that three beat canter. The other thing is, is that there is no age limit for your horse or your rider, but um, all horses have to be four years of age and older to be able to actually compete. What I would suggest to do, um, I always think it's a really good thing, is, is go to some competitions and just watch people riding so it gives you a little bit of an idea of how the day runs rather than just sort of take yourself off to dressage go and watch some people riding and i would go to one of your local shows and start with watching sort of the lower levels and then i would go and watch something that where the riders are a bit more advanced so you can just kind of see where you start and where you know you could hopefully end up it don't go be put off by going to sort of Hickstead or one of the major Premier League shows watching the what looks like elitist horses and riders at that end of the scale and think well I'll never be able to do that because we all have to start somewhere so I would definitely go to the lower level and just give yourself a chance at, at being able to just get started at that beginning part general guidance I would be trying to achieve you know like around sort of 65 percent um, or, or close to it unaffiliated before I thought about affiliating my horse and that's even myself you know even with when I've got a, a young horse or an experienced horse I want to go out and be able to sort of know that I'm around about 65 percent just because when you go affiliated the standard is a bit higher and you've got some quality horses and some good riders um, and it's not about going out and winning and that doesn't really matter because you're riding against yourself really but it's nice to go out feeling confident that you're at least in those 60 percent um, so you can go out and then when you go affiliated you start to gain points so anything above 60 percent your horse and yourself will gain points at that so a good reason to affiliate it is um, to affiliate is because you have judges that have been trained, so they all are looking at those horses with the same eyes. So unaffiliated, we have a lot of volunteers, which is lovely, and a lot of people um, that might ride dressage themselves, and, and that's useful, but they're not necessarily an actual judge. So the affiliated judges, they've gone through. An accredited training system so you can be sure that they will be consistent with their judging. In the recent years there's been definitely more opportunity for grassroots riders to compete at championships both winter and summer um, championships so um, we have area festivals and we have regional championships and national championships uh, which is all very confusing um, but the area festivals are lovely because they're aimed at more the grassroots riders and to qualify for those you only have to get a score of 60, 62% I think it is or above. So that gives you an opportunity to ride at a festival um, and get that feeling of what those big um, shows feel like without the pressures of being at a regional or going to nationals which is even scarier. So the area festivals are lovely. So like the Pet Plan area festivals are a really good way to get started. And as I say, you only need to get 62% and above to qualify for those. The tack and equipment that you need, there's a 
rule book with British dressage and I would advise getting that rule book even if you're not going to go affiliated because a lot of the British dressage um, rules are applied to the unaffiliated dressage so it can be quite useful for you and I wouldn't be put off because you think oh I only have a GP saddle or I only have a jump saddle and I've got to go out and buy a dressage one it really doesn't matter at the lower levels it's just um, you're not allowed to wear martingales or running reins or anything or running martingales or anything like that you're in a snaffle bit but there are a list of permitted bits that you can use when you get to elementary you're allowed to use a double bridle you don't have to use it at that point but you are allowed to use a double bridle but before that you're not allowed to use a double bridle you are allowed to use a whip and you are allowed to use spurs but in any championships you're not a, permitted a whip so that's something to remember because I've done it myself gone into a championship <laughs> trotted round and up the centre line and then realised I've still got hold of my whip so it's not good you try to remember um, that for championships you don't need a whip um, you are allowed to warm up in boots and bandages but you must take them off before your test that's another thing that's easy to sort of forget you're warming up and you're getting in the moment and perhaps getting a bit nervous and then you forget to take the boots off and that will cause elimination. So at the lower level, some judges will be really kind and they might see you come in with your boots on and they will say you need to take those boots off or you need to put if you haven't got gloves on or something like that. And they'll just remind you because we're all just trying to encourage you know, if I see someone that's made a little mistake when I'm judging, I'll try to help them before they actually ride the test. Because at the lower levels, it's all about encouraging people into the sport. So hopefully most people will give you a little heads up if you haven't got something quite right. We have um, lots of YouTube videos and some of them are about how to ride a test and some basics just to get you started. We've also got one on the scales of training and I would say that this is one of the most important things you need to learn is how the scales of training um, are listed and how they kind of intertwine with each other. I'd also try and get a little bit of professional help so that you've got someone that can just keep an eye on you and help you interpret what you're reading and learning into actually physically doing it with the horse. What's really great with the dressage now is there's so many different like categories that you can ride in. So if you have an Iberian horse, there's a, a whole uh, championship, national championships for those, the race horses and other specific breeds as well. So it, there's a lot of fun things you can do within British dressage. Some of the benefits for going affiliated are um, you get a list of accredited trainers so you can go into their website, BD website, and you can search for your area and all the trainers in that area will come up. Um, also, you get a monthly magazine. That's really good actually because there's loads of informative articles, um, little tips on how to ride a test or um, training tips. There's always lots of info in there. Um, they also have lots of training courses, um, your competition results and there's also like a schedule of all the affiliated competitions going on all around the country. We put this video together today because quite a few people have recently been asking me when should I affiliate and am I good enough to affiliate. So hopefully this will all help you. If you have any questions just leave us a comment in the box below and we'll get back to you. And don't forget to like and subscribe.